Hey, welcome back to episode number 5. In this episode, we are going to learn about how to configure and monitor Azure App Service apps. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. Application settings hold configuration settings for values that may change, such as a database connection strings. Adding application settings allows you to modify the configuration input to your application. without having to change application code so let me explain you different ways you can configure your application settings first let's go to portal.azure.com then either use the global search box or you can use the recently used azure services to go to azure app services select an existing app service or create a new one so i'm going to select an existing app service on the left hand side under settings you can find configuration select that this is where you will be able to find different azure application settings so we have application settings general settings default documents and path mappings in app service app settings are variables passed as environment variables to the application code and these app settings are always encrypted when stored This offers encrypted at rest and these app settings can also be resolved from key vault using key vault references by default values of app settings are hidden in the portal for security to see a hidden value of the app settings click the value field of that settings you just need to click the show value button to add a new app settings click new application settings and in the dialog you can stick the settings to the current slot once you have a settings you can go and edit a settings by clicking edit button on the right hand side and to add or edit app settings in bulk click advanced edit button and do your modification and click okay next topic is connection strings you can find connection strings right under the application settings just like how we discussed the application settings You can enter your new connection string over here. Provide a name, value, and you can select the type. And to see the hidden values, you can click on Show Values. And to do bulk modification and bulk edit, you can click on Advanced Edit. The next topic is General Settings. For that, go under Settings, click on Configuration. Right next to Application Settings, you can find General Settings. This is where you can configure some common settings for the application. Some settings require you to scale up to higher pricing tiers. Under stack settings, this is where you will find the software stack to run the application, including the language and SDK versions. For Linux apps and custom containers, you can select the language runtime version and set an optional startup command or startup command file. And platform settings lets you configure settings for hosted platform. including bitness which is which lets you choose 32 bit or 64 bit you can choose between integrated or classic managed pipeline version and you can choose to allow all ftp state or ftps only or you can disable that state as well always on keeps the app loaded even when there is no traffic when always on is not turned on by default the app is unloaded after 20 minutes without any incoming request the unloaded app can cause high latency for any new request because of its warm up time when always on is turned on the front end load balancer sends a get request to the application root every 5 minutes the continuous ping prevents the app from being unloaded and always on is required for continuous web jobs or for web jobs that are triggered using cron expression in a multi instance deployment ensure that the client is routed to the same instance for the life of the session you can set the option to off for stateless applications enable remote debugging for asp.net asp.net core or node js apps this option turns off automatically after 48 hours an incoming client certificates requires client certificates in manual authentication the next setting we are going to learn is default documents 
This setting is only available for Windows apps. The default document is the web page that displays at the root URL for a website. The first matching file in the list is used. If the app uses modules that root based on URL instead of serving static content, there is no need for default documents. You can change the default document settings by going into Settings, Configuration and select Default Documents. To add a new default document, click on New Document. And after you modify all the values, don't forget to click on Save button. Now let's look into path mappings. For Windows apps, you can customize the Microsoft Internet Information Services or IAS handler mappings, virtual applications and directories. You can use handler mappings to add custom script processors to handle requests for specific file extensions. You can add custom storage for your containerized app. Containerized apps include all Linux apps and also the Windows and Linux custom containers running on app service. So select your application, go under settings and configuration and click on path mappings. This is where you will be able to add new handler mapping and any virtual application and directories for your application can be added on this page. So when adding a new version, which can be a major or minor, it installed side by side with existing versions. You can also manually upgrade your app to the new version. If you configured the runtime in the configuration file, such as web.config and package.json, you need to upgrade by using the same method. If you used an app service settings to configure your runtime version, you can change it in the Azure portal or by running Azure CLI command in the Cloud Shell. To update the application runtime, use the AZ Web App Config set command with the appropriate parameter for your runtime. The Web App does not have a built in mechanism to update Node.js runtimes. Instead, you can use AZ Web App Config App Settings set command to change the website node default version application settings to the version of node.js that you wish to use. To add or edit app settings in bulk, use this JSON format shown in this slide. Browser security prevents a web page from making requests to a different domain than the one that served the web page. This restriction is called the same origin policy. The same origin policy prevents a malicious site from accessing sensitive data on another site. Sometimes you might want to allow other sites make cross-origin requests, which is known as CORS. CORS is the World Wide Web Consortium, which is known as W3C standard, that allows a server to relax the same origin policy. In standard CORS implementation, in a standard course implementation, the JavaScript client will send a pre-flight request to assess the server's willingness to accept a cross-site request. If allowed, the JavaScript client will then issue a cross-site HTTP request. Now let's learn about how does the operating system and runtime patching work. App service is a platform as a service which means that OS and application stacks are managed for you by Microsoft Azure. You only manage your application and its data. Azure manages operating system patching on two levels, the physical server and the guest virtual machines that run Azure App Service resources. Both are updated monthly and these updates are applied automatically. In a way, that guarantees the high availability SLA of Azure services. New stable version of supported language runtimes are periodically added to app service instances. Some updates override the existing installation while others are installed side by side with existing versions. An override installation means that your app automatically runs on the updated runtime. A side by side installation means you must manually migrate your app to take advantages 
of a new runtime version. Let's look into how you can handle inbound and outbound IP addresses. Azure App Service is a multi-tenant service. Apps share network infrastructure with other apps. As a result, the inbound and outbound IP addresses of an app can be different and can even change in certain situations. Regardless of the number of scaled out instances, each app has a single inbound IP address. Sometimes you might want a dedicated static IP address for your application. To get a static inbound IP address, you need to configure an IP-based SSL binding. If you don't actually need SSL functionality to secure your app, you can even upload a self-signed certificate for this binding. And regardless of the number of scaled out instances, each app has a set number of outbound IP addresses at any given time. Any outbound connection from the app service app, such as connection to backend database, uses one of the outbound IP addresses as the origin IP address. So regardless of the number of scaled out instances, each app has a single inbound IP address. The set of outbound IP addresses for your app changes when you scale your app between the lower tier, which is basic, standard and premium and the premium version 2 tier. You can find the set of all possible IP addresses your app can use regardless of the pricing tier by examining the possible outbound IP address property. So that concludes episode 5. In the next episode, we are going to learn about how can you scale your Azure App Service apps. I will see you on the next one. Until then, take care.